In 1977, Marvin Creamer's retirement from Glassboro State College was seen as a fitting end to an illustrious career in education. Founder of the Geography Department, Creamer's tenure was marked by achievement and innovation. But where many people might see retirement as an invitation to slow down and take it easy, Marvin Creamer turned his eyes seaward to a dream that had captivated his imagination almost 50 years earlier. From the time I was 17, I wanted to sail around the world. When I wound up at Glassboro State College as a freshman, that was my motivator. I took every geography course I could get, and I tried to imagine sailing to these places that I was learning about. And it was with a real thirst that I, I did that. I maintain that I was taken prisoner by an idea. When I finally got the boat that I always wanted, uh, I sailed first to Bermuda, then to the Azores, and on the way back from the Azores, uh, two things happened. The self-steering got clobbered, and the compass light began to fail every single night. And I said, Ed, uh, Ed, I want you to put the North Star over that stanchion right there. Uh, keep your butt where it is, and that way you, you'll get a fairly accurate track. I didn't know how accurate it was going to be, but when we tried that for a couple of nights and I worked up the noon positions, I found out that sailing at night by the stars was about as accurate as sailing at night with a compass. And so then the wheels began to turn in my head on night watch. Uh, I wonder, you know, if you could find a way to sail without the compass in the daytime. Creamer began to develop various methods of instrument-free navigation. He became convinced that he could determine his vessel's latitude and longitude by observing a combination of winds, currents, wildlife, and constellations. He put his methods to the test with a voyage from Ireland to the United States and again from the U.S. to Africa. With the successful completion of those trips, he saw clear to taking on the challenge he had dreamed about his whole life. Now, the Globe Star was built in Canada. It was called a double chine boat, which meant that it had two flat places coming up the sides. But the builder rolled the plates, uh, in other words, curved them, and the boat looked like an ordinary round bottom boat and behaved like a round bottom boat. The plan is to travel 30,000 miles in this 36-foot sailboat to circle the globe in 17 months. And the plan is to do it without a compass or a sextant or any kind of mechanical navigational aid. The trip was kind of like building a building from the blueprints. And it went fairly well with a few glitches here and there. One of which was the knockdown approaching uh, uh, Tasmania that killed our alternator, which made it imperative that we get to shore because we wouldn't have any lights or even enough energy to crank the engine. Uh, a knockdown uh, and almost capsized coming out of Tasmania, that was tough. I had just dislocated my left shoulder and had to deal with the sails that were being torn apart. Had to get them down with the, the dislocated shoulder. Found that I could only, I couldn't move my left arm, but I could swing it with uh, centrifugal force and was able to bring the sail down and grip it with my fingers to get it down. That was a bit of a challenge. But on the other hand, we had some good luck. We went across the Pacific with only five nights when we saw stars that we needed for latitude, five nights and five sights in 5,000 miles, and yet we came out on the exact latitude of Cape Horn. Not, not a quarter of a mile off after 5,000 miles. Now, that was a bit of good luck, so. On May 17, 1984, after almost a year and a half, Creamer sailed Globe Star into Cape May, New Jersey, and a well-deserved place in history, a place he alone occupies to this day. Quite hazy. We were in the shipping lanes. The wind was flat. We were under power and our propeller shaft twisted off. That was yesterday in Delaware Bay. <laughs> Kramer and crew relied on the stars, the color of the seas, and the speed of bubbles in their wake to determine their course. 
The sailboat was constantly tracked on radio, providing some reassurance to Kramer's wife, Blanche. Professor Kramer's voyage survived a broken tiller at Cape Horn, rough seas beat calm seas, it got greetings from flagships all over the world, and it achieved what Professor Kramer calls a small step backward for mankind, for it proved it's possible to circumnavigate the world using information only from the sky and from the sea. It can be done. At Red Bank Battlefield, Kate Larson, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. In the heart of the Rowan University campus stands Endeavor, a monument to Marvin Creamer's voyage around the world. Built to the exact scale of the Globe Star, it is a tribute to his deep desire to connect people with learning and to inspire curiosity and imagination long after he's gone. I don't have the physical stamina or muscle to do it now, but I, if somebody wanted to do it, I, I would go along. <laughs> Gladly.